watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. One more time, I want to welcome every one of you. Those watching from the TV directly in the greater Houston community and all those in the different social media handle, those from the church and all our friends and partners all over the world. One more time, I want to welcome you to day 23. Day 23 of our 100 days consecration for supernatural wealth transfer. I bless God for giving us the opportunity to come your way into your home and i know that today is going to be a very gigantic blessing i am feeling it already guess what there is somebody in the house i am so excited i know somebody will say why is bishop so excited but there is somebody very very vital and important to my heart that is in the house not just that somebody but what god did you need to stay tuned and hear what God can do, what God is doing, and what God wants to do, even in your life. So at this point in time, I want to pray, and I will bring in our guest minister. Father, we open up this program in the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we take charge of every spiritual atmosphere. Let your name be glorified. Honor yourself in the midst of this production. Your name be glorified forever in Jesus much less name we pray amen. with precious thanksgiving amen and amen like i said previously today i know looking at me you know i'm so excited somebody that is so strategic so important so unique a wonderful personality is in the house again with us when i communicated to him despite the tough schedule not just tight schedule but tough tough schedule but because of what god has done for him and how he knows that he is an instrument of a generational change to his generation. He said, come on now, Bishop, I will be there to share my testimony and also to be a point of blessing to what God is doing in the 100 days supernatural wealth transfer consecration service. So today, I present to you a very wonderful person there to my heart. He's going to be introducing himself before we take it. One more time, we want to welcome you to this uh, program. Um, you are such a wonderful personality, uh, I, Dr. David. I want to appreciate God for answering um, this call that yes. God needed your attention to be with us yes. in these 100 days of consecration for supernatural wealth transfer. I want you to introduce yourself to all our global fans, our audience, and I want to believe God that they are in for a big time with you today. Yes, I want to welcome everybody today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I'm happy to be here in, in, in the presence of, of everyone, and it's just amazing. Uh, I've known uh, uh, Bishop Abia here for over, I think we've known each other for at least 10 years. 10 years, yeah. And it's just amazing to see what he's doing. And um, I, I got a chance to see what he's doing here uh, with God's Word, especially at this time and, and where we are right now. And it's really amazing what he's doing. And like he said, I, I said, look, I'm, I'm willing to drop everything just to be here because at the end of the day, when God is, 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 when God is doing some amazing things with people, we need to share because you don't know who's going to bless. You don't know who's going to help. You don't know who needs that extra encouragement. So That's true. I'm really glad to be here. One more time, I want to bless God for you and thank you so much for heeding to this call. Coincidentally, today being a blessing, today is a very critical topic. Like we did yesterday, day 22, we have been on a series, Dr. David, on the issue of yes. how immorality. Yes. People see it as pleasure, yes. but we are unveiling it. Exactly. The, 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 we are taking off the skin to make people understand what is behind the scene. Exactly. Take off the skin Very to important. see behind the scene. Very important. And um, we are not being careful about it. We want to disgrace Satan and disgrace all the works of the flesh yes. so that we can go to the next level. Yes. And I thank God that today God is going to be using you as a point of contact to do to us. Amen. So today... We are still looking on the subject, immorality, how it plays a negative effect on God's agenda of supernatural wealth transfer. Yes. The people already know that God has an agenda to transfer wealth and riches to the righteous yes. for kingdom exploit, yes. for kingdom expansion, yes. for kingdom growth. Yes. But 
we are beginning to see that one of the major limitation for this is the issue of immorality that god does not want to invest where his name is not glorified so so i, I don't know what can you say about the what do you think about um the effect of uh of immorality as it has to do with kingdom advancement and wealth transfer well you know it's interesting because i'm just can i just share my story and, go ahead, and what go ahead. happened for me just yeah. to prove that what you're saying is is right in alignment because I was one, I've always been excited about uh, uh, being successful in life and having everything I want, you know, being able to have financial success and things like that. Um, however, and, and don't get me wrong, I got to that point where I was having some uh, uh, form of success, but I didn't have peace. There, there was no peace. There was no validation for the success I was having. Mm. So I knew that there was something wrong. But, you know, when sometimes when you're deep in it, when you're deep in the sin, uh, it's very difficult for you to even realize because you know the enemy is very manipulative in what he does oh, yes. and very conniving in what he does and he's going to ensure that he keeps you grounded yes so just use me for example i used to be involved right and and you know how sometimes we have these vices and we have these go, go ahead. issues tell, as, tell your as, stories and we keep it inside the closet yes yeah. go ahead tell, so, tell us your stories so, so i used to be involved in masturbation uh pornography uh, and fornication, like sleeping around with women all over the place. Anywhere I travel, I travel a lot. So uh, whenever I travel, I always, you know, find uh, women to sleep with, whether it's New York, uh, Texas, uh, New Jersey, Canada, it doesn't matter. Mm. And I did this for 22 years of my life. Well, 20, 25, but counting in America, 22. Three years in Nigeria before I came to America, and tw uh, 22 years in America, just involved wow. in this lifestyle. And, you know, and, you know, hanging around the men who feel like it's okay. So they used to give me high five. Ah, you slept with her too. You slept with her too. So, you know, it was just that, you know, because you, they say like attracts like. So you hang around those same type of people and just doing this perversion and thinking it was okay. Yeah. You know, and then I had the audacity to get in front of God and then say, Lord, please, oh, this one that I just slept with, I hope she didn't have anything. And this one that uh, you understand, like, yeah, have the audacity, the ignorance, right? To go back to God and, and then pray that and then go right to the next one. So I did this, like I said, for 22 years is a long time sleeping wow. around with these different women. Uh, but I'm going to cut it short and I'm going to just because at the end day, I never forget the day that changed everything. It was September 26th of 2018. You said September 26th, 26th of 2018. I remember the day vividly because I had an event. And at that event, I saw a woman uh, about 7.30 in the evening. And I said, yeah, this one, I'm going to sleep with her too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, when you've done something for so long, it's easy to detect. So I detected and I looked at her and I said, yeah, this one, she'll be easy for me. I'll, I'll close that one. I used to use it like close, like a real estate transaction. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'll close her tonight. So at the end of the event, I went and talked to her and asked for numbers, told her my plane was leaving. I was in Houston, Texas, of all places. Wow. Yeah, I was in Houston, Texas. Where I live in Georgia. I don't live in Houston. But I was in Houston on that day. And my plane left at 6 o'clock back to Georgia in the morning, so I had to close the deal that night. I had but, to do but it. But did she agree and give you her number? Yeah, she gave me her number and, and gave me, uh, I left a little early, you know, uh, uh, came back, you know, because I didn't want people to see that I was, I was in that lifestyle. So I, I knew it was wrong, you know, sleeping around. I didn't Because, you know, people talk about you. They're like, oh, this leader is sleeping around, you know, stuff like that. So um, I left a little early, came back a little later, called her on the phone, said, I'm here. So she gave me her gate code to get into the apartment. It was a gated wow. apartment. So she gave me the gate code. Come on. So I was about to close that deal because she was in line with everything. Remember, I've been doing it for 22 years in America. So it wasn't nothing new to me. You understand? Wow. So it was just according. So I got inside and, and everything. And when I got in there, I got into the apartment and she opened the door for me. Um, oh, oh, I put my condoms in my pocket. I was ready. Hold on. Come again. I said, I, I parked my car, it was a rental car, Chevy Malibu. And when I got in, I took my condoms because I always travel with condoms, big pack. The 36 pack. You mean condoms? Yeah, I, 36 pack. So the project was with the condom? Well, hold on, let me just, let me keep going so that everybody can get it. Yes. So I took one condom, put it in my right pocket, took another one, put it in my left pocket. So the I can go inside and do what I need to do with this woman. Wow. Yeah, that's what I meant. So when I got in there, so when I got in there, um, 
Uh, she opened the door for me. So, it was, you know, it's a done deal, right? Because um, I've been doing it for 22 years. I keep emphasizing so people understand that this, is, this was nothing new to me. You know, when you do a certain perversion for so long, it yeah. becomes normal. It, it becomes like eating food. It was regular for me because, you know, I knew what to say, you know, to these women. So um, I got into the uh, apartment, and but I noticed something that was unique that I'd never seen in a woman's place that I came to, you know, indulge in sexual perversion with. Mm -hmm. I noticed a Bible on the coffee table. Oh, a Bible coffee similar, table? Yeah, a Bible similar to this. And it was on the coffee table, and it lay open, and that threw me off. Because she knew what I was there for. She knew I had made it very clear that I'm there only to sleep with her. I didn't come there to be in relations with her. I didn't come there for, that, for us to sing Kumbaya. I didn't come there for us to do Bible study together. So I just came to do one thing and get out. You know, Lauren wow. Hill sang this song a long time ago called That Thing. Mm -hmm. Some people have heard that song. Well, she was singing about me because I was that man who only wanted one thing. That's to sleep with him and get out. Wow. I wanted nothing else with him. I wasn't trying to do anything else. Wow. Because that's what the devil does. You know, he causes, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So me was just go sleep with her. However she feels after, I could care less. But that's where I used to be, of so, course. So she looked like one of those persons you're going to close on. Yes, yes, yes. But what happened? I noticed a Bible on the coffee table, so that threw me off. I wasn't expecting a Bible. Um, so I knew, I said, okay, hey, I've, I'm an expert, so I'm not, we're not going to talk about the Bible. So I said, can you turn on the TV? She turned it on, started watching the TV show or something. Until today, remember, this happened September 26, 2018. So that was over four and a half years. Until today, I don't know how it happened, whether she brought it up or I did, but that Bible on the coffee table came up. Wow. Yes, yes. And this woman who I had picked, there were a bunch of women at this event I had gone to, and I picked her as the weakest link. I said, this is the one I'm going to close. I said, this is the one I'm going to sleep with tonight. And this woman started ministering to me. Oh, she preached to you? Yes, yeah, started ministering to me. Wow. Started, and, and don't get me wrong, I was, I, I mean, I've heard ministry before. It wasn't my first time. I've been to church. I go to Bible study, things like that. So it wasn't like I haven't been to church and heard the word. But the way this woman was ministering to me, I mean, she was telling me things like how God loves me, how Jesus Christ died for me. And if I was the only one on this earth, that he would still have his arms wide open, ready to receive me. Oh, God. If I just give him my life. And as she was talking to me, guess what? I, I was feeling a way I've never felt in my life before. I was getting convicted as she was talking to me. This woman who I had picked randomly at 730 that evening was talking to me like she knew me, like she always knew me. Because God had told her everything about me. But, of course, I didn't know. See, I always use the term, God set me up. I didn't know that. He set me up that oh night. Oh, my God. And what if I told you I literally put my hands in my pocket, okay? <laughs> because I was so convicted. And I pulled out the two condoms that I came to use on this woman. And I laid them on the coffee table next to the Bible. And I said to her, I said, um, i never forget what I said to her. I said, I came here to sleep with you. I literally made a confession. I said, I came here to sleep with you, but I don't know what's going on right now. But I can't do it. Hmm. That's what I said to her. And she seemed to understand. She just kept ministering to me. And, and, and it was time for me to take my leave because, look, I was defeated. I say it all the time. For 22 years, I had been the victor. For 22 years, I knew what to say. And I always closed the deal 95% of the time. And on this day, September 26, 2018, I got defeated. The enemy got defeated. Yes, I was the enemy. I was. Um, and that night, I did get defeated by this woman who I had picked and said, yeah, I'm going to sleep with her too. So, um, so at, at this point, yes. was there any way that that night you gave your life to Christ? Yeah. She actually, led you to Christ? Actually, what happened? Yeah, we, we got in the car. Let me tell you the first thing I did when we got to my rental car. I pulled out the box of condom, the one I said I travel with. Yes. I did something I had never done in my 25 years of perversion. I walked up to the garbage disposal and I threw everything away. And All of Yeah, them. the whole box. I just threw it away. I was that convicted. She said a prayer for me and she walked back in. And I never remember what happened. I got in the car, got back in my rental car. It was about midnight. And I, 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 I held the steering wheel and I put, I, I leaned forward and looked up at the sky because I knew God was doing something. I didn't know what was going on. And I said to God, I'll never forget, I said, Lord, I get it. Because I knew at that point that God was trying to save me from total destruction. The way I was going, that route I was going. Yeah, yeah it was a perversion. Nobody knew except my personal friends who I called and bragged to. So nobody else knew I was living that perverse lifestyle, but God knew. And God was, I was I'm not going to be mocked. You know, you're not going to be going to church and reading your Bible. 
and you know, but you're here in this perversion, perverted lifestyle. So I got home, cleared everything out, threw away all my uh, condoms. Of course, I had them packed up in the house. Threw away those ones. Threw away all the DVDs, all the s tablets, condoms. Oh, everything. oh, you mean you came back? I home. came back to Georgia. Yeah, I made the flight at six o'clock that morning. So I got back home and, and I started this garden. Up? Yes, yes, I was that convicted and threw everything away. And I'm here to tell you, Bishop, that since September 26, 2018, I've been celibate. I've been celibate. And I, but I give all the glory to God. I did, give all did, the glory did, to did God. Did you just hear that? Did you just hear that? That God can break the yoke. Yes. God can break the yoke. No matter 24 years of this stronghold of immorality, of sexual perversion, yes. broken under one night. Yes. We may not have all the time. But if you are there watching us and say, man of God, I, I want God to do the same to me. Before we pray for the prayer for the yoke to be broken, I, I'm going to call on Dr. David to give as many of you who really want to accept Jesus as the Lord and your personal Savior like he did that night. Yes. He's going to be praying a simple sinner's prayer, calling you and calling the hand of God to pick you from where you are and write your name in the book of life and delete it out of the book of death so that you are going to go out of the path of destruction, like he said. So, so get ready. Open your heart. He's going to be praying a simple prayer. And I believe God is going to hit you at the point of your need and bring you out from the path of destruction. And we're going to come back to pray the prayer for that deliverance. Go ahead. Well, Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Today. Thank and you. And we just thank you for the fact that I'm able to share this Thank you, Jesus. And I always give you all the glory for coming into my heart and just rescuing me on that night. Thank you, that Jesus. That night when I thought I was going to do the work of the devil, Lord, but you intervened, you interceded. Thank you. And you turned me around. Hey, and Lord, as people are watching this, uh, video this they're, they're watching this broadcast Lord I ask that if any one of them watching this is engaged in any type of perversion like I was the yes, God, that's and sure. the pornography and the Monday. sleeping around and sleeping with people that don't they're not married to and Man, thinking it's all normal Lord we ask that you come into their heart and begin to heal them and begin Amen. to restore them Amen. whatever brokenness just like I was broken and that's why I was willing to go break other people because I was broken My inside God. And, and Lord that whatever happened whether it was a sexual molestation whether it was verbal abuse mental abuse psychological abuse whatever has led to them becoming that person who feels like it's okay to sleep around who feels like it's okay to watch pornography and masturbate and and do all types of other perversions My that we God. haven't even mentioned today lord we just ask that today you begin to cancel that out Amen. in their lives and you begin to restore them like you restored me Amen. and they'll be brand new they'll be brand new they'll Amen. be fresh and that people will see the glory in them and people want to come to you because the only reason i'm sharing this lord the only reason I'm sharing this is because of I know that this can make a difference out there like you made a difference for me. Amen. So we just ask today, Lord, that you come into our hearts, you begin to heal us from all our brokenness, even Amen. other things, anger issues, lack of self-control, anything that's not of you, anything that's not of the fruit of the in Spirit, the Lord, of we ask that you lift it today and you give us a new lease on life Amen. and that we keep drawing closer to you because we know the more we draw closer to you, the more you'll keep pouring into us and align us to grow in your kingdom. Yes. We ask of all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I, I want to hold his hands in agreement and we pray for you. For everyone watching us now, it is very simple. How do I know? The Bible says it shall come to an end. It shall come to pass on that day. Yes. How will it happen? The yoke will be broken. Yes. The bodies will be lifted and the bondage will end. That is what I agree with my brother in prayer for you. That every yoke of sexual perversion yes. in the name of Jesus whether it is what we know or we don't know, in the name of Jesus, let that yoke be broken. Amen. Let the yoke be broken. Amen. Every yoke of sexual perversion, we command them to break. Amen. Whether their masturbation break, Amen. whether their fornication break, Amen. whether they are any time, Holy Ghost, let that yoke be broken. Amen. Break, break, break. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we command the bodies to be lifted up your shoulder and let this bondage come to an end and let jesus be glorified Amen. thank you father for in jesus much less name we pray with thanksgiving amen. amen one more time how has it been for four, more than four and a half years yes, yes you have been yes. celibate has it added now has god been better to you than before 
I mean, Bishop Abia, I can't even explain it. It is priceless. I mean, now I look at myself and I say, wow, I can't, you know, like I said, the enemy comes. He's very tricky. The enemy is very tricky. You know, he used to be God's best angel at one time. Yes. So he has great uh, attributes to him and he knows how to use it. So he always gave me this impression when I was into the dirt. He gave me the impression that um, because I always knew there was a void inside. You know, it's interesting when I was sleep with these women and things like that. There was always this void that I knew needed to be filled. Filled. Right? And so when I zip up and everything and I'm done... I always, there was just this void. There was this emptiness. And you know how the enemy made me believe to fill the void? He would make me pick up the phone and make another phone call. To wow. an, yeah, to another woman and say, hey, can we meet up next week or can we meet up tomorrow? So, you know, but that's what he does because he, he just continues that perversion. It's like a drug. You know how people do drug and mm -hmm. get the high? So there's this high when you're engaged in the act, when you're engaged in the fornication, when you're engaged in the sexual pleasures, it feels great. But when you're done, it's back to zero. And now you have to now either go back to that same person again, but it, there's never a feel. So, but after this incident happened and after God used that woman to minister to me, and maybe that's why this is even happening because here I am, because I, I told God to use me as a vessel, just like he used that woman for me. Wow. That I said, Lord, use me as a vessel so that I'll be able to reach out to other people and help them understand that, yes, you can heal from that. And let me tell you, I said a prayer to God. I told him to take that perversion spirit away because I knew it was a spirit. And I told him to take it away. And I'm telling you, God answers prayers. Hmm. You have to kneel down and ask him and mean it. I mean it. The pleasure don't mean nothing. That pleasure, give me a break. What is pleasure? You get pleasure from your wife or your husband. That's where the pleasure is meant to come from, not from this random guy you met at the club or a grocery store or a bus stop, because I used to meet women everywhere. But you know, but you only gain that pleasure from knowing Christ. And, and it, it's just, it's amazing. I can't even, like, I don't even feel anything. You know, I don't even feel like one day going like, oh man, I haven't had sex or so what's going on. You understand? Yeah. Nothing like that. Cause God took it away. And he said, when you, I'll, I'll give you that wife. And when I give you that wife, then of course you can engage in that. Cause that is absolutely necessary. You know what? We are going to be coming back because now that there is something you are hearing from that day till now, he's still a single young man. Don't get this wrong. He's still single. He's still handsome, he's still rich, he's still great, doing fine, better than before. The last time I checked, God has multiplied him 10 times better than before. Yes. In fact, that is part of the reason why he's here today. As we round up this section, yes. we'll be coming back again to hear more other things that God is going to be doing yes. to his name alone be all the glory, honor, and praise Amen. now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you and God bless you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. God bless you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I will love you so much. Thank you so much. Your testimony is outstanding. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. See you tomorrow. Yes. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ.